I will delay actually there was a traffic so I come back to my studio from my house and today's traffic maybe because of certain reasons I got delayed uh, standing out of my own office for five minutes so let's get back today's topic is how to read British history we have entered in age of Chaucer till now in two different live classes we have talked about Anglo section all the new students who are watching it for the first time if you just complete those two lectures on Anglo section, you don't have to read any other thing. Yes, I'm telling you with the experience of my 8 net double JRF and 17 set and more set and net are coming. So I'm using my experience of gate and everything as I'm telling you. Simply remember that lecture on Anglo section, the two lectures on Anglo section are more than enough. Now we are talk about age of Chaucer. I will tell you the you know transition, the difference, how from Anglo section to Chaucer the literature got developed. What was the reason behind this that Anglo section literature and Chaucer's literature have a big gap? Plus, what were the direct reasons that is of Chaucer or Chaucer's uh, contemporary writers? They were all were having heavy influence of Italians. So let's talk about this thing. Take your pen and paper, write it is of Chaucer, and let's go for it. So here we have this whole board and let's talk about age of Chaucer. So we take the reference of Chaucer because Chaucer is known as the father figure for English language, English writings, English poetry, one of the first writer. The timing of age of Chaucer, it goes from 1340 to 1400. Now remember this thing, it is age of Chaucer. If we talk about the birth of Chaucer, it goes 1343. I think uh, if I check is a board visible area, there is a reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, students can see, that is very important. So students remember this thing, we are talking about age of Chaucer, we go for round figure, 1340 to 1400. But if they say the birth date of Chaucer, birth, then it's 1343 to 1400. So don't mix up these things, don't be confused. Okay, now the question comes that what are the changes, what are the differences, how we move for a new age. So remember this thing that there were multiple things were happening in this time as one of the most important thing is the hundred years war hundred years war that's very important thing from 1337 to 1453 that's very important thing then second thing the black death epidemic black death 1348, this Black Death appeared in Dorset area of England, Dorset. It killed around 33% people, 33% public. Now, I suggest you to write down these points. What are we writing? We are writing about the journey from anglo sections to Chaucer's age. You know, this is called transition from anglo section to Chaucer's age. So what are those things which took place? What are those things which happened actually? So 100 years of war was going on. See, 100 years of 1337 to 1453. Then Black Death came in 1348. Then there are many other things. We have multiple things who are happening together. Now the question comes that how and why this age becomes very prominent. This is technically the first age of English literature. I hope you have written it. I want to tell you this thing. The regular war 100 years war was being fought between England and France. England and France, they were fighting. So technically, the English colonies, English territories, English people, English tribes were having war with French tribes. The regular war was going on. What happens when the war goes on in your city, in your country, if the war is going on? What is happening to Ukraine right now? What is happening to the world? When the war goes on, Everything gets disturbed, it troubles, society's development comes to an end. No human development, no intellectual development, no social development, all things get closed. So technically 100 years war made England, you know, a different kind of country, a new, strong and better country. Now second thing, when you have a war between uh, your colonies and their colonies, Remember this point, friends, this is very important. See, reading literature is easy, but to understand literature is very tough. Remember this point, 
Why this 100 years war plays a role? I told you that England was fighting with France. But we already have talked about this thing that in Anglo section there were multiple tribes. Sections were there, Anglas were there, Jews were there, Vikings, Barbarians, uh, uh, these kind of uh, Danes, Scandinavians. So all of these tribes were there, but the majority was of Anglo sections and Normans. They were powerful people. So these tribes, they were still having issues. These tribes, they were fighting each other also. But the moment they started fighting French tribes, these tribes found unity. Let's make it easy. In India, you have seen people are fighting on the name of religion, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai. They are fighting on certain things. But what happens if India goes for a war with China? Then India uh, in Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, everything will become one. So technically, the Hundred Years War against France made England find its identity as a nation, a strong nation. So technically, England became a strong nation. Now, second important thing, the Black Death. What is the role of Black Death? Black Death is very, very important because this made people question religion. Black Death was actually a plague. A plague which reappeared in 1362, 63, 65. At that time, people didn't know about sanitation and uh, there was no sanitation, no sanitization. People didn't know about the epidemics. People didn't know about that these epidemics, you know, they get circulated. They're like pandemics. So when Black Death appeared in Dorset in 1348, it killed around 100, you know, one third population, 33% people died. Around 5 to 6 billion people died, all of a sudden. And they didn't know what is happening. They didn't have science, they didn't have medical science. So they didn't know what is happening. But they knew one thing, one thing they knew. And what was that? Promise of church. Yes, my friends. At that time, religion, church, the churches would sharing pardons. Their churches were giving promises. So there were a lot of wrong practices in the church. So the church authorities, partners, they were selling tickets to heaven. They were selling tickets of long life. They were asking people to pay to be happy. Suppose somebody tells you that give me 1000, I am a priest and I will give you 10 more years in your life. So at that time there was a system that please pardon uh, purchase pardon. You have confessed your crime, purchase pardon, you will live a long life. You will always be happy. I have blessed you, no disease will come to you. But when everybody started dying, even the people from church, they started dying. They didn't know that this uh, disease is dangerous. People started questioning religion. People started questioning religion. You know, all those people who have suffered in Corona, they must have thought about this thing, that why God is torturing us, where is God? So the, when the trouble comes, epidemic comes, the first thing that happens is you start questioning God. The concept of religion got questioned that are we dialing a wrong number? Remember the, uh, the reference of PK? What does Amir Khan say in that movie? That we are calling God but it's the wrong number, we are not calling the right God. So they also started questioning that our religious people, are they up to the mark? Are they, are they real people? Are they you know uh, honest people? I give you one reference. The Pardoner character in Chaucer, Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, Pardoner character gets drunk. He is going for the journey. He gets drunk, and after getting drunk, he tells people that I am not a pardoner. He says I am carrying some bones, some tooth of animal to show people that these are the relics from church but I am not a partner, I didn't complete my degree of partner. I go to remotest areas, I go to the villages and I scare people on the name of hell. I make people scared on the name of hell. I didn't complete my degree, I am not a partner because he is drunk. So Darubi is drunk, he is telling truth to everyone. He says, I am not a partner, I am not a partner, I am simply scaring people and then he says, that when he scares people to confess their crime and when people confess if you know that in Christianity confessions are there, confessions are made to church 
when people confess, he tells them a price. He says, okay, pay a price to God and your uh, uh, crime will be pardoned. So suppose you said that I, I felt jealousy for my neighbor. He would say, give me $10, $100. But this partner says that I take money. I take money for confessions. Ke. If they are not able to pay money, I take their cattle. And if it's a poor family, they don't have cattle, they don't have money, I take their daughters. So he said, by showing them the fear of hell. This is the partner. So technically the wrong practices of church, corruption of church, very much, uh, it was very much prevalent. I hope you know. And when partner becomes normal, he forgets that he himself has told truth. So he tells people that be scared of hell and buy the pardons, buy the pardons. So partner technically tells us that why the church was very much corrupt. Chaucer has talked about eight religious characters. Out of them, seven are corrupt. Somebody uh, goes for hunting, somebody is conscious about fashion, somebody is lusty, greedy, suffering from gluttony. So that's the reason when you start questioning church, it becomes a very important point. Why so? Because at that time, churches were more powerful. Churches were more powerful. Even than the king. Churches, king ko bhi bol sakte that uh, king is of no use. If they asked you in the ancient ages who was more powerful, mostly it was church which was powerful. A you an example from Iran. The elections in Iran got con uh, you know, conducted and Mahmoud Ahmadinejad became the president of Iran. But the Dharam Guru, the ulema of Iran, Ayatollah Khomeini, he simply called this election a bogus election and cancelled the seat of president. And Ahmadinejad had to resign. So that's the reason that he was a powerful guru. Same kind of things were here. Church was more powerful. So Chaucer's age, which is also the first modern age, Chaucer's age is also called the first modern age, actually tells us about the corruption of church and all types of other issues. I also tell you this thing. The corruption of church, you have understood. We have a famous writer, John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe was the man, the first man who translated Vulgate's Latin Bible into English. Vulgate's Latin Bible into English. The first man to translate. And that was the translation of Old Testament. Please remember this thing, Old Testament ka translation tha. The translation of Old Testament. So John Wycliffe, one of the first person to talk about reformation of church. He was the member of, leader of the group Lollards. Lollards group ka leader tha hai. After Wycliffe, John Parve became the second leader of the group. John Parve. Ye facts yaad rakhna dosto. Paper mein aate hai, do do number le jayenge. These facts are very very important. The first leader of Lollards, John Wycliffe. Second leader of Lollards, uh, Lollard, John Parve. Who were Lollards? The people who were talking about reformation of church. Reformation of church. Actually, How many of you know what is LOL? You must have used LOL on Facebook. Laughing out of laughter. But LOL also means to chant the bhajan, to chant the hymns. So they were the singers, Lollards. Wycliffe was the first man to translate Vulgate's Latin Bible into English. Also remember this point that Vulgate's Latin Bible is also called St. Jerome's Bible. Don't make a mistake guys. Note karo. St. Jerome's Bible. They asked you tough question in exam by changing names. Vulgate's Bible was in Latin. Same Vulgate also called Jerome. St. Jerome's Bible. Latin Bible in English. And it was Old Testament. Now many of you must be thinking what is Old Testament, what is New Testament. It is believed that before Christ, the followers of God, Mother Mary, Virgin Mary and people going to the churches, the bishops, the monks, their uh, preachings, their sermons were compiled together. So the Old Testament is the part of Bible before Christ. New Testament is the part of Bible when Christ came. And the followers of Christ compiled the sermons and speeches. Initially, people didn't believe in Christ. And that was the reason that anybody who talked about Christ or Christian New Testaments, they were punished. The famous example of William Tyndale. Yes, it's what Tyndale William Tyndale. 
he translated New Testament in English. William Tyndale, the first man to translate Bible in English, the New Testament. First Bible in New Testament style. He was burnt alive. Isko jinda dala diya. Isko fry kar diya thun hone. New Testament ke liye. So make sure remember that English with New Testament was not that much famous. Now, we have understood about this thing. We have talked about these wars. I tell you about the important dates in 100 years war. In 100 years war, we know that England and France were having issues in 1337 to 1453. Now I tell you that there were three important battles where England defeated France. Number one, Battle of Crissy. 1346. Battle of Poitiers. 1356. And then Battle of Agincourt. 1413. These three important battles are there. In these three important battles, English army had a, a massive victory. Battle of Crissy, Battle of Poitiers, Battle of Agincourt. Friends, they have asked questions. They will give you one more battle and will simply ask you pick the order out. Take a screenshot if you want to take. These three battles were very, very important. England found its identity as a nation. Now, as England found its identity as a nation, the very first thing they wanted to have was a language of their own. A language of their own. Why do you need a language of your own? Why do you need a language of your own? There are multiple protests going on. Somebody says, no, we don't want Hindi in India. Somebody says, no, we don't want Tamil in India. Somebody says, we want English in India. People want a language. Language is the root of culture. The root of culture is the root of culture. Ka. Kill the language, kill the culture. Root of culture is the root of culture. statement, the greatest writer from African literature, Gugiwa Thiongo, he says, kill the language, kill the culture. किसी की भाषा खत्म कर दो, लैंग्वेज खत्म कर दो, कल्चर अपने आप खत्म हो जाएगा। Kill the language, kill the culture। अंग्रेजों ने हमें क्या किया? अंग्रेजों ने हमें अंग्रेजी भाषा दे दी। The British taught us English language and then they started becoming English। So we are not into those typical celebration, right? How many of us actually go for Makkah Sakranti? How many of us actually know about all other kind of shukl paksh, ashtami, vastami and all? We don't know that much, right? We know about chocolate days, we know about some father's day, mother's day, this day, that day. Technically, we started becoming like them. So that's the message here. That if you have, if you want an identity, work on your language. Find your language. You should have your language first. Now see, at that time, English was not a language. Remember this thing, friends. I have told you that Anglo-Saxon works were written in English, but that was the oldest form of English. The words taken from Turkish literature, the words taken from French, Latin, and all those words were not in proper way. Also remember this thing, that English language will have two major shifts. First, in Elizabethans, after 1550, English will have better words. 100 plus words were coined by Shakespeare. And then English will have a better standard in Neoclassicals. The present day modern English comes in Neoclassicals. We will study great vowel shift. I know nobody has taught you these things in your colleges. But we will study Otto Jespersen's question of net exam. Otto Jespersen's great vowel shift. Jespersen's great vowel shift. We will study that. We will study about Edison. Samuel Johnson said if you want to command over the English language, give your days, give your nights to Joseph Edison. We will read all these things. So now, let's get back to Chaucerian style. If you're a new student and you want these kind of lectures, if you can go for online class, I suggest you go for online classes. They will find these kind of lectures on every topic. Now, let's go for it. Language. So we have talked about language. At that time, there were multiple dialects. See, Mercian was a dialect. Mercian was a dialect. East Midland was a dialect. East Midland was a dialect. Kentish was a dialect. Northern Bream was a dialect. Southern Bream was a dialect. These are multiple dialects in England at that time. These were the major dialects in England at that time. 
Now the question comes that one of this dialect will be taken by Chaucer and will be converted into English language. Yes, my friends, East Midland is chosen by Chaucer. East Midland. Why so? It was the language of center of England, more prevalent than other dialects. Chaucer selected East Midland to be converted into a new kind of language, which is known as modern day English. And we also know that East Midland was very much flexible in its standard, was very much close to the first language, Ingla. Ingla language and East Midland were almost basically the same. So technically, East Midland language was used by Chaucer to be converted into English language. Yes, my friends, even English language didn't exist before 1362 and other days. Now, English became the language of court in 1362, language of parliament 1363, and language of school in 1386. Keep writing, language of court, English became language of court 1362, language of parliament 1363. And English replaced French from school syllabus. School ki padhai English mishul 1386, the first book in English, Canterbury Tales, came in 1388. 1388. All these facts can give you JRF. Just the way I'm teaching right now, I remember all these things. Language of court, 1362. English became language of parliament, 1363. School syllabus, English replaced French for school in 1386. Canterbury Tales was written, the first book in English was written in 1388. And now, let's talk about the kings of that time. Who were the kings at that time? Three important kings. Edward III. Richard II. And Henry IV. Henry IV or Henry VII. Henry VIII. Henry IV. I should rewrite it. Edward III, Richard II, Henry IV, also remember their time duration on throne. 1327 to 1377, approx 50 years. 1377 to 1399. And 1399 to 1415, Henry IV. That's the reason you will understand that from 1327 to 1415, these three different kings were actually very much important in 100 years war, in development, Plus, they were the people, they were the kings at that time, the time duration of Black Death. I hope you have gone for these things. I will stop it today, uh, just because having some headache also, because of rash driving, I came for the class. So we'll stop it here. If you are loving the lecture, I suggest you to be the part of online classes, so that you have thousands of lectures like this. And I will be continuing here also for all of you. Thank you so much.